All right, people, what is going on? This is episode 339 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and look, it's been a great weekend. It's been a really good weekend for Falcons talk. I mean, the, the, the draft was a success. All the players that were picked looked like they could play right away. Um, look like this team is definitely going in a new direction. If you watched the last video, um, and if you came through because of the last video, I appreciate the support. Thank you for all the kind words. Thank you for all the insight that you guys are bringing to the table. This is what it's all about. It's not just me putting out content. I want to hear you guys' thoughts as well. And that last uh, that last video was a success. It was really, really good. I appreciate all of you guys, all the people who are subscribing to the YouTube side of things. That is great. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. I talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, kind of interchange them throughout the week. Whatever the topic is, is more important in my opinion. And we just talk about football over here. We love football and we just try to uh, give out the best commentary possible. Um, also, if you want to listen outside of the YouTube and Rumble, because I'm on YouTube and Rumble, if you want to listen outside of that, I'm on uh, Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify. Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, so you can listen to this at your own leisure. And um, everybody who's came through, I I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very very much. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. The Atlanta Falcons had success, much success, uh, as far as the draft goes. I think they did a phenomenal job. Now we get into the undrafted free agents that they signed. I I know I think Terry Fontenot said this, and I'm going to call it that as well because no, you know that's a good way of putting it. This is the round. This is round eight of the NFL draft, and this is where you can pick up some uh, undrafted free agents. Hopefully, they can find a spot on the team. And uh, there was what I think it was nine players that was picked up by the Atlanta Falcons. I want to name those guys, but there are four guys, in my opinion, maybe five. I'll give five an honorable mention for you know that really stick out. They really stick out, and I want to put a spotlight on those guys. And uh, we're really going to get into that. And I'm also going to tell you what that means for the team as they continue to progress because, like I said in the last video, this team is just transformed. This is not the same team that we had last year or the year before or any of the times we had a pretty decent run throughout the seasons. Now, I feel confident. That's why I got my shades on. I haven't been wearing them since for a long time. But since I feel pretty confident about what's going on here, so I'm going to – Keep my shades on until the Falcons or the Georgia Southern Eagles give me a reason not to. So all that means is they just got to continue to make good moves and they have to continue to uh, uh, find ways to win football games. So let's go ahead and get into this. First and foremost, when uh, after the draft was over, the Falcons picked up Ferris State quarterback Jared Bernard. Now, now he's not going to be playing quarterback. They already said that he's going to come in and try to play a uh, kick returner or wide receiver. This is like a special teams move right here. Now, as far as special teams go, uh, we already got one guy. I think it was is Avery. He does pretty good, but it's nothing wrong having a second person. You're going to every time there's a kickoff, you have two people back there, right? Put him back there. This kid is fast. He's very fast. I've seen him move. I watched some of his tape, and I understand why for him to be a undrafted free agent and for him to get picked up by the Falcons. It's a perfect, you know, scenario for. Um, Bernard, I think I said that right. Jared Bernard, uh, perfect, uh, scenario for him. Uh, go ahead and, and if you find a place on special teams, you'll always have a job. And it looked like this is where this stands out at. Uh, also who's not pictured up here. Um, Stanley Barry, um, Barry Hill, the third Arizona wide receiver could be a steal, but the only reason why I don't really I'm not going to put him up there too high. It's because of the receivers we already have. If you already have an Alden Tate and Drake London. You got Cordell Patterson possibly going to go back and play wide receiver more. Kyle Pitts at tight end. You got a couple other guys who came in already. Stanley Barry Hill, he's got to put in that work. I think he can, but he's going to have to put in that work to get some time on the field. And I didn't even talk about all of my Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is another guy who's already proven. So, yes, yeah, Stanley Barry Hill looked like he could be a sleeper. But up against that competition that he's um that that's on the team, he's gonna have a, a uphill battle. That doesn't mean that he's a bad player. It's just that look where you look what situation you're going into. So just be mindful of that when you see Barry Hill come through. Now these next two guys that I'm about to mention, I have no idea why these guys weren't drafted. I looked at their tape. One person I watched their tape prior to the draft, and I thought for sure he was going to get drafted. 
and it, this is it, it's criminal and it's almost robbery that we got these two guys both of them are pictured on the screen if you're watching on youtube and rumble the first guy is uh iowa cornerback matt hankins matt hankins for iowa I mean, I watched this kid's tape while this kid was not drafted somewhere in the fifth or the sixth round and possibly could have gone as high as third because this kid looked like he could play some ball. All right, th th this kid, I, I don't know where he's going to end up because he's an undrafted free agent, but if the Falcons can keep him, you know, th th this is a this is an excellent pickup for the uh, Falcons. Wherever he goes, I think he has potential to be at least at the minimum a nickel corner, but he's shown the plate outside as well. He has shown the plate outside corner. I don't, I, I still don't understand why nobody picked this guy up. Go look at his tape. I'll probably put this, the tape down in the description so you can look at some of this kid's work. He's played very well in Big Ten football. And you're a cornerback in the Big Ten. Why you have not, why did not, you did not get drafted is beyond me, especially when this is a passing league the way it is. I'm not saying he's a top pick, like a, a first or second or third rounder, but this kid has enough skill to at least be drafted. And I, I'm 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 totally surprised that he didn't. I'm glad the Falcons did pick him up. Listen for this name somewhere down the road. I, I think he's gonna be I think he could be pretty special in, in the NFL. Now I'm not I'm not saying that to be joking. If if it's a hot take that goes wrong, it ends up being a cold take, I'll eat that. But looking at this tape, there's no reason why this kid, no reason why this kid did not get drafted. Another person that's also pictured up here is Brad Hawkins. Why this kid didn't go drafted is is another one. Is way beyond me. Played pretty well against Georgia. Played pretty well throughout the entire season with Michigan and goes undrafted. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. All seriousness, um, Richie Grant is been put on notice, and I'm not joking when I say that. I'm gonna put his this video of him down in the description as well. Brad Hawkins has been put uh, is put in Richie Grant on notice, and I like Richie Grant. Don't get me wrong, but when you go back and look at this guy's tape, this guy's played very well in the Big Ten as well. Played in big games against other uh, other NFL um, prospects and played really well. Now I'm not saying that neither one of these guys, Hankins or, or Brad Hawkins, don't have deficiencies. I'm pretty sure they do. Nobody's perfect on the field, but you can't tell if you look at these guys, uh, their 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 highlights. And the school they came from and the, and the success these two schools had as far as Iowa and Michigan and tell me that these kids don't get drafted. I, I just don't understand that. But nevertheless, the Falcons got him. Brad Hawkins is, is put in, I don't know which side of the safety. He looks more like a strong safety. Richie Grant has been put on notice. And I'm not joking when I say that. Go look at this guy's highlights as well as Matt Hankins' highlights. Go look at both of these guys. I'm going to put the link down in the description. Watch these two. These two guys are the real deal. And the fact they didn't get drafted in the seven in seven rounds, it, that, that's criminal. Absolutely criminal. The next person I'm going to talk about who's not pictured here is Central Connecticut wide receiver Tashawn James. Now, it looked like he had some size to him. I watched some of his highlights. It looked like he can go up and get the ball. I kind of put him in the same position where him and Stanley Berryhill is. You're coming in a situation where these receivers are already kind of established. Alden Tate, Drake London, you know, uh, Cordell Patterson, um, all of my Zacchaeus. I'm not saying that they can't play, but look at the situation you're getting, you're putting yourself in. I'm not saying putting themselves in, but look at the position that you're coming into. You're going to have the ball. You and him and Barry Hill's going to have the ball. Yes, they could be sleepers. I think they could play some, you know, I think they're going to be pretty good. Not saying that you no know, cash or Spurgeon's on them saying they can't play. But when you talk about these type of guys coming into a situation like this, um, you're going to be vying for a spot. And um, just you know, best of luck. And I think they they're able to 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 put up some type of uh, resume where it's going to give Arthur uh, Smith and Terry Fontenot a reason to scratch their head a bit. So um, just 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 put that out there. I think though, I think that's this is a pretty good pickup. But um, with the situation you're in, it's going to be a little bit different. Now the per next person who's pictured here, um, Colorado linebacker Nate London. But I mean Nate Landman. I watched some of this guy's uh I watched some of this guy's tape as well. Nate Landman looks good. He looks really good. He looks like Nate Landman looks like your typical middle linebacker that's ready to take charge and lead a defense. Now, I know we already talked about um Anderson and uh, from Montana. Those two guys together, they look like they're going to be pretty good. 
Um, I'm not sure if Nate Landman will make the team, but I will say this. Uh, he's going to uh, be really good. Nate Landman looks like a type of person that could be, uh, you know, a, a, a really good player right here. He could be, he could be a really good player. And, uh, with the linebacker situation we have with the Deion Jones, I think we still got Rashad Evans, we got Michael Williams, um, just adding more linebackers. So it's right up Dean Pease's alley. And this is another one that I thought that Nate Landman uh, should have been drafted, you know, sixth, seventh round, whatever the case may be. But this guy looks like a leader. I, you know, one thing about him I will say, I think that he will be pretty good on special teams. Hey, this is another guy look like he could be be pretty good on. He could be a leader on the special teams. So you got him with a couple other guys that are special team uh, specialists. <laughs> they look like they could do something, and um, I'm I'm here for this, and uh, really good pickup for the Falcons. I'm not saying that he, you know, other teams, you know, just miss pass, passed up on him, but he could be somewhat of a sleeper. So that's another thing that uh, I want to uh, address. I mean, you go look at the highlights on him as well. As a matter of fact. I'm going to do this. Everybody that's pictured up here, I'm going to put their links down in the description so you can check out their highlights if you haven't already. You know, um, I think these guys are the ones that are going to make an impact for the Falcons right away. Uh, also, um, the other three that's left, USC linebacker uh, Kanai Mongo. I didn't see too much uh, information on him, so I don't know yet. The, you know, the, the jury's still out on him. I don't know. Uh, also, um, another one, UC Davis, Bryce Rogers, didn't see much on him as well. Pretty big guy, but I didn't see any tape on him, so I don't know what I'm looking at. So those two guys, I don't know. Penn State, Derek Tangelo. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this guy here. I don't have him pictured up here, but this is another guy who played alongside of, um, AK, um, Ebiquete. That's why I call him AK because Arnold. Um, Ebiquete, he played side by uh, next to him, and he looked like he could play some ball as well. Looked like a guy that could possibly stop the run, uh, also um, be disruptive in the pass, kind of like a, a, a middle of the road tweener, like he can play a little bit of both. Uh, I can, I can, I can uh, expect him to actually find some time on the playing field to do different things with him because he doesn't have like the the complete size of a defensive tackle. But he plays like one as well. That's why they say he can do a little bit of both. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try to move him outside a little bit, put him inside sometimes, and uh, try to have him do a little bit more exotic things, kind of like what Dean P's like to do. So that's basically everybody as of right now who's been picked up as a list of free agents. I think the two that stands out the most, possibly three, is the two defensive backs, Matt Hankins, Brad Hawkins, those guys should have been drafted. The Falcons got a steal with Brad Hawkins, in my opinion, possibly with Matt Hankins as well. Nate Landman, the linebacker, I feel that he's going to be a, a, be a contributor right away. He could be. So out of all of these guys, those three guys could be a contributor. I don't see the Falcons letting Brad Hawkins go. I I, I will be surprised. I don't see the I don't see that the uh, Falcons. Coming in, signing Brad Hawkins, and he don't make the team. He looked like a guy, that, and with the safety situation we have, I would not be surprised. In my opinion, I think he plays better than uh than Richie Grant, and it, and it's almost not even close. If you look at the highlights that uh Brad Hawkins have done against high level talent, other NFL prospects, other guys that have been that are are in the draft now or who has been drafted, Matt Hank is another one. I don't know. Well, I ain't gonna say I don't know. He's played in the big, big ten, so he's played against other talent as well. So you're looking at a situation where these two guys who played at um at high high powered power five schools, high powered conferences that played against other NFL talent and been as productive there was. You look at the highlights that they've had, and they don't get drafted. The Falcons got a pretty good deal with these two guys here. Also, Nate Landman. Also playing in the Pac-12, somewhat high-level talent there. I'm not going to cast a spurs and say that they're not as good. But when you play at Colorado and you are uh, leading a defense the way you did, I expect him to possibly you know, be a threat for a middle linebacker job. I can see him possibly being a threat for a special teams job. 
I mean, he just looks like one of those guys. I mean, just look at the picture here. He just looks like one of those guys that can do a little bit of everything. Links will be down in the description to all of these guys' uh, videos. And last but not least, Ferris State, Jared Bernard. I looked at what he can do with quarterback. This guy's fast. He's fast. Go ahead and let him um, get some kick returns in, get some putt returns in, have him um, be electrifying, uh, electrifying player, flip the field for us, get us some good field position, or in, in, in the beginning of the of uh of a drive, and you cannot go wrong there. I think not only what they've done in the draft, the Falcons have done in the draft. I also feel that they're continuing with the high quality level of players that they're bringing into the round number eight of the NFL draft, which is the undrafted free agent um uh part of the off season. And I think they've done a pretty good job at getting these guys from Barrett. You know, and Bernard, I'm sorry, from Bernard, Barry Hill, Hankins, Hawkins, Tyson James, Landman, Malga, uh, Rogers, and Tangelo. I think they did a really good job. You, I, I don't think you can get any better than what I see here. So um, let me know what you guys think. If you like this commentary, hit the like button. Share this podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube or Rumble channels if you haven't already. Uh, give me a five-star rating on that Apple Podcast app if you don't mind. Also, if I'm not doing good, Give me some feedback on the on, on the apps. Let me know what I'm doing. I think pretty much all of these uh, podcast uh, avenues give you some form of feedback where you can give me feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. I think the Falcons are doing pretty good. I think the Falcons are on their way to be one of the better teams in the NFC South and possibly in the NFC. They've transformed this team to be somewhat decent, at the very least somewhat decent. And I'm hearing people saying that they're going to probably make the playoffs. Hey, y'all got to understand, look, we won seven games with what we had last year. If we can get some, this, uh, this possibly we can get at least two more wins, right? I know the divisions that we played this year are kind of tough, but we've done a pretty good job of conforming to a be being a better team than last year. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get up out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your Monday. Hopefully you guys uh, re uh, share this content. Let people know what we're doing over here. Let people know what we're doing. And uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.